Hello. So I'm going to read you a part of a letter that a man wrote. Okay? This guy writes, I envision a world where a person with multiple disabilities can be euthanized with an agreement from the guardians when it is difficult for the person to carry out household and social activities. He wrote that he could wipe out a total of 470 disabled individuals by targeting two facilities for disabled people during the night shift when staffing was low. He wrote, the act will be carried out speedily and definitely without harming the staff. After wiping out the 260 people in two facilities, I will turn myself in. The person who wrote that and sent that to someone in the Japanese parliament killed 19 disabled people on Tuesday, July 26, 2016 and left 26 disabled people injured. He was an ex-employee at a residential home for people with disabilities and went back into the same facility to murder its residents. A hate crime with that many lives lost It's Thursday now, right? Thursday? And there's a lot of people who had no idea that this happened. I'll tell you who I've seen talk about this story. It's only been people in my disabled community. And that was really disappointing. I'm a part of several communities because I have several different intersecting identities that are marginalized. Um, and along with identifying as queer, I also am emotionally close to Pulse as a nightclub itself. When Pulse was attacked, and it was a hate crime against the LGBT community, The world showed up in support. All across the globe, people stood with Orlando and stood with the families that were attacked. They lit rainbows on their buildings in, in solidarity with the people who were suffering. Because even if you never set foot in Pulse, if you identified as part of the LGBT plus community, you felt it. Because it was a reminder of the hate that you face every time you set foot out the door of your home. And for some people, they're not even safe in their own homes. The same thing goes for the disabled community. So. Where are the news stories? Where are the people? Where is the support? And I'm not even saying it's anyone's fault for not knowing, because it's not in our news. It, maybe little blips, little articles have happened, but it's not something that was made nearly as big as other hate crimes and massacres. On the 26th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, 19 disabled people were murdered and 26 left injured by one man who believes that people with disabilities should be euthanized because their lives serve no purpose.
because they'd be better off dead. It would be foolish for anyone to believe that this man is isolated in that belief. That is something that we have to face all the time. And that is definitely the most extreme form of ableism. But it functions like a pyramid. It, it trickles down. It trickles down to the fact that a lot of people's responses to the lives lost is to shrug. Say, oh well. Next story. And what would make someone do that? And the truth of the matter is, what would make someone do that is when the truth of the matter is that they see disabled people as less human. And the goodest, kindest people can fall into that trap because it's just what happens. We are brainwashed to be ableist. And we do it all the time. We get mad if somebody can't hear us, belittle people when they make less than intellectual decisions, less ability or lack of ability, and therefore disability as something bad, as something less than, all the time. And people with disabilities are either infantilized or fetishized grown people with disabilities often get treated like infants. Because I use a wheelchair, people have pat me on the head like I was a child. People have talked to me in this kind of voice because I'm in a wheelchair. Do I sound like somebody who wants to be spoken to in that way? Because let me know what I have to change about the way I talk because, or, or look or anything so that somebody doesn't talk to me in that way. This was a hate crime. It was ableism to its most extreme. And I'm involved with several activist communities as well. Um, activists for racial justice and LGBT justice and often they like flow in and out of each other because there's intersectionality there. But even with intersectional activists Disability is often left on the back burner. Disability is often an afterthought. Even in activist space, where the focus is on human equalities and, and equities, they'll go completely absent-minded on making the space accessible for people with disabilities. Disabilities is not part of that picture. And I guess what was really upsetting about the fact that the internet was silent on this tragedy, maybe it'll get better, right? I'm, this is going up on Thursday and I'll, I'll stay optimistic and maybe people We'll talk about it, and we'll talk about ableism. One can hope for the best. But up until now, it's been crickets on the internet. And that was really hurtful. That we would try and try and shout and share the articles and be talking about it on Twitter. And very little very few people got engaged in the conversation or shared the articles or shared what we had to say about it. People need to understand that disability could happen to anyone. Disability, if you're not disabled at all, can happen to you at any moment. In fact, within the span of life, oftentimes people correlate being elderly with being disabled. Because oftentimes um, abilities are lost 
as we age. So why do you think disability should not be at the table in the discussion when it comes to equality? If disability is not a part of your life right now, you need to start paying attention. You need to start following some disability bloggers, disabled YouTubers, whatever, but start getting engaged with the community and start listening to them and listening to their stories and understanding how much lack of accessibility that, that there is. That the things that are so easily granted to you, access-wise, is not accessible to other people. When you can get into that bar for your friend's birthday party, but your friend in a wheelchair can't because there's a staircase but no ramp, they might as well have a sign that says, no disabilities allowed in this bar. That, that's what it's like. And it's not fair that the only people that I see talking about it are people with disabilities. This is everyone's battle. Equality should be everyone's concern. And I know that I went on a ramble. I'm sorry. It's just that that's the kind... Those are the feelings that the silence, like, pulled out of me. Which is this feeling of neglect and abandonment. This guy wrote a letter to Parliament. Like, he thought he could get a law passed to get disabled lives euthanized. Legitimately. Like, it was the most logical thing to do. And there are people in this world who do think it's the most logical thing to do to take the broken, the wounded, the paralyzed, the young forever, the, the all the things that people think that we are, and make us extinct from the planet. That the world would be better off if we were all gone. If you don't believe that to be true, then please show your support and your solidarity. Please become involved, sorry, with what is happening. Please self-reflect into what role you play when it comes to the oppression of disabled lives. How thinking someone with a disability is so cute might mean that you're not necessarily seeing them as your equal, but as someone that is smaller and cuter than you. It's just time to think about those things. It's just time to take a step back and like really think hard about how we perceive people and how we perceive disabled people and how do we move forward from this space. I think that's all I got to say. I'm sorry, this is probably a really long video, um, but I don't know, I haven't slept for 24 hours, at least 24 hours, yes, I, ugh. So, yeah, as usual, leave me your thoughts and comments in the comment section, yeah, and I will see you all eventually. I have so much love for you, spoons for you, solidarity for you. Be well.